In today's video, I have to admit that I went a little bit overboard during April and I have a grand total of 20 books that I've added to my collection. Now, in my defense, seven of these were actually birthday gifts, but without further ado, let's get into the books. So hello, my fellow fantasy book lovers, and welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, hi and welcome. My name is Kathy. I'm a god girl from Belgium who loves reading fantasy books. Now, I will be going through the books that are behind me, and they are actually in order of purchase. So I went to Waterstones, um, I think in the second week of April because I had a few pre-orders to pick up. So those are in here. And then also later in the month, I went back to Waterstones. But now without further ado, let's get into the books because there's a lot of them. <laughs> The first book is another cozy fantasy, or at least that's the way that it was recommended to me. It is called The House Witch and the Enchanting of the Hearth. When Finlay Ashawan joins the kitchen of the king and queen of Daxaria, he's an enigma, which suits Finn just fine. He's satisfied simply serving as a royal cook, keeping nosy passerby out of his kitchen and concocting some truly scrumptious meals. But Finn has a secret, one that may not stay hidden for long. As his past begins to catch up with him, Finn must negotiate court politics and stay out of trouble together with his familiar, the fluffy black kitten Kraken. But things become even more complicated when he catches the eye of a certain lady who just so happens to be part of the royal court. Can Finn successfully hide his secrets and protect his hearth? Or will the chaos of the castle and its good-hearted people get the best of him? So yeah, this is like basically a low stakes fantasy book, which I think for fall is going to be one of my cozy reads. Up next is The Poisons We Drink. And I'm not sure if you caught up with any of the book drama that has been happening the last few months, but one of the authors actually review bombed negatively other authors. And this was one of the books that was unfortunately targeted. So I will just read the very short description. In a country divided between humans and witchers, Venus Stoneheart hustles as a brewer, making illegal love potions to support her family. So I think, again, that this will not be the most high stakes fantasy book, but I'm looking forward to whenever I read this. The next book is a book that was actually recommended to me and it is The Last Unicorn and it is about the last unicorn, apparently. And I'm just going to read the first very small description. If men no longer know what they are looking at, there may well be unicorns in the world yet, unknown and glad of it. So there is actually like a unicorn that tries to survive, I think. We'll see when I get to it. Um, again, I just wanted a few lighter fantasy reads, like in-between reads, um, to supplement the, the epicness of the vampires, etc. After that, we have Warrior of the Wild. Again, a recommendation by Emily from Waterstones. Each scar makes me a survivor, a warrior of the wild. As her father's chosen heir, 18-year-old Rasmira has trained her whole life to become a warrior and lead her village. But when her coming-of-age trial is sabotaged and she fails the test, her father banishes her to the monster-filled wilderness. To win her way back into the community, she is forced to embark on an impossible quest. She must kill the oppressive god who terrorizes the villagers or die trying. So this is a more high-stakes book and yeah, again, recommendation that I will sometime be reading. And then I have two books from the same series. And when I read these titles, they just made me laugh. And these are actually very, very thin reads. So it's book one and two in the series by Kimberly Lemming. The first book is That Time I Got Drunk and Saved a Demon. And the second one is That Time I Got Drunk and Yeeted a Love Potion at a Werewolf. So, um, this is just entertainment. This is just fun. This is not anything serious. And I'm actually super looking forward to reading this. So who knows, maybe already very soon I pick one of these up because they're very thin. Up next, we have A Multitude of Dreams by Mara Rutherford. I actually have another book by this author already that I haven't read yet. But when I saw this, it just spoke to me. Um, and she's the author that wrote The Poison Season. The bloody plague is finally past, but what fresh horror lies in its wake? So I think this is 
vampire themed, but not exactly vampire themed, but dark themed and pulling off of themes that relate to vampires. Not exactly sure, but I'm very happy that I got it. And yeah, we'll see when I get to this one. Up next, we have this very pretty edition of Somewhere in the Deep by Tanvi Bedoa. I absolutely loved the first book by this author, Monsters Born and Made. And apparently this book is set in a similar world type setting, like the two books take place in the same general realm. They are not exactly related to each other, but this is again an aquatic fantasy theme book and I'm super excited to read this. I might actually just push this one into the month that I'm reading Dragon Books or the month after because I really loved the first book by her and I really want to read more by them again. Up next is The Crimson Malt. You might have spotted this book in a lot of subscription boxes. This was actually in the Fairy Loot Young Adult Box, if I'm not mistaken, of March or April. And I love that cover, but people are asking ridiculous prices for it. So I just went with the basic hardcover that I found at Waterstones. And this apparently is going to be book one in the Crimson Moth duology. The only thing more treacherous than being a witch is falling in love. So I'm not gonna read too much into what this book is about, as I just want to read it rather fast. And I might be saying this about a lot of books, but this one is actually very high on my priority list because it just looks very pretty. And like, I love witches and I love like a little bit of romance. And I have recently really been loving the YA books from Fairy Loot. So I am currently on the wait list for the YA subscription. Well, for the combined box, exactly. Um, but yeah, I really love the other books. They are down there somewhere um, that I've already read from the YA subscription. So I want to read more of those. Then I, by surprise, picked up a Sara Ye Ma's book on a flea market, actually. There was someone who had a big pile of English fantasy books, most of them that I liked, I already owned. But then I spotted this one and I was like, oh, for the price that she was asking, I think this was five euros, three euros. And brand new, this was like 13 euros because in Belgium, when you buy English books, they cost a lot. It is Catwoman Soul Stealer. It is spray painted purple. And if you've seen my declutter, you see that I'm already getting rid of this book because I didn't realize when buying it that this was exactly based on the DC Catwoman. And I don't really like DC. So this one is a dot. This one is a book that I bought and I'm already reselling because I really don't feel like keeping it. So if this is something that might interest you, it is up on my Vinted account and you can always lower the price a little bit. I just want my monies back on this one. And then we have the fairy loot, I think of March that finally arrived during April. It is a feather so black and it is a gorgeous edition. And the theme for March was actually Swan Lake. And it says, discover a hidden gate to the Fey realm and join Fia, a changeling turns by in her efforts to bring back a stolen princess who is cursed to turn into a swan by day. Everything is made more complicated by an accompanying prince and a gradually growing suspicion that the truth of her mission may be different than it seemed. So yeah, this is a book that I have and that is very pretty and that I will someday read. Um, but I feel like this is just a retelling of Swan Lake. So um, the story that I grew up with, which is fine. Maybe it's a twist on Swan Lake, but it's not something that I right now want to read. I think for me personally, this would be a book that I read more towards fall. But again, it has gorgeous spray painted edges. It has a beautiful cover. It has artwork on the inside of the book as well, which I really enjoy. So it is a absolutely stunning book as always by Fairy Loot. After that, we get into gift territory. So these two books were actually birthday gifts from one of my best friends, Louise. She gave me the J.R. Ward Dark Lover book, which is the first one in the Black Daggerhood series. Um, she has been telling me to start reading it and I was always like, but I don't own them and finding them for my e-reader and blah, blah, blah. So now she finally gave me this book. Um, I'm going in without too many expectations other than it's smutty romance. And it is in the same genre of Laurel K. Hamilton, who I did enjoy her Anita Blake series from. So we'll see, this is going to be a fun in-between read, I bet. And also from her, I got this book, which is called Thread Needle. There is magic in 
every nook and cranny in this fantastical novel that stalks the streets of London's underbelly. An enthralling and original fantasy woven inside a magical web of lies. And this is Jay Kristoff, one of my favorite authors who has this quote on the back of the book. So I'm really excited. So Anna's aunt has always warned her of the dangers of magic and its deadly consequences. She counts the days to the ceremony that will bind her magic forever. That is until she meets Effie and Attis. They open her eyes to a London that she never knew existed, one filled with magical shops, a secret library where the librarian feeds off words, and clubs where revelers lose themselves in a haze of spells. But as Anna is swept deeper into this world, she begins to wonder if her aunt was right all along. Is her magic a gift or a curse? So this reminds me a little bit, since it's London-based and like different underworlds kind of, it feels a little bit like Neverwhere. So we're gonna see what type of book this is. And again, I feel like this will probably be a book that I read during fall. After that, a friend gifted me this steampunk duology, which is called Skyland. It comes into a big box. Now, the only thing that I'm like, mm, I'm not sure yet about is because these are in Dutch. So it's by David Carlyle and it is, Stormship and Islands in the Wind, so in Dutch, het Stormschip en Eilanden in the Wind. Um, it's the year 2251, a new era in which the world we know is completely lost. Fragments of earth hang in the sky and water is the most precious good there is. In this post-apocalyptic setting, Lorenzo and Valerie are trying to discover the secret of Skylink by finding the missing link. The File Carlisle. So this is a duology with steampunk influences. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure when I will read this and honestly I'm not sure if I will read them in Dutch. I might actually try and find the English versions because the steampunk and the post-apocalyptic theme really speak to me, but I just don't read in Dutch. So it's unfortunate that yeah, these are in Dutch, but I mean my friend who gifted this to me, she was coming from the best intentions and I'm super grateful, but I might just like give these to my partner who does read in Dutch and then for myself find them in English. <laughs> Up next is a book that I bought myself, so I got a little bit of money for my birthday as well. And I have Gideon the Ninth. I can't remember the second, the ninth, and then I was missing Nonna the ninth. And the hardcover books were becoming harder and harder to come by, so I just ordered Nonna the ninth. And since this is the third book in a series, I will first have to read Gideon and then the second, the ninth book before I can reach Nonna. But this way I already have it for when I start reading them. And also they're not the biggest books, so when I start reading Gideon, I might actually continue with the other two books. We'll see. These three books were also given gifts by some of my best friends. Um, well, no, not exactly. They gifted me Waterstones money to spend on books and I went for the books that I wanted. So the first one is An Education in Malice by S.T. Gibson. I absolutely loved the first book by them that I read, which was A Diary of Blood. This is the second one and then the third one is coming out this month or next month. It is called evocation if I'm not mistaken but anyways I really love the writing of the first book so I'm really looking forward to this one which has on the back love is a sacrifice one of us was always going to bleed for the other so it is a stunningly gorgeous and devastatingly romantic book so I'm just really looking forward to this one again maybe more a fall read but we'll see when I pick it up then I also picked up a more paranormal feeling book, which is called The Knowing. And on the back it says, you can't summon it, my friend had told me, but you can, oh you can. You can usher it on the wings of dead and blood. You can tempt it like a scavenging bird swooping low on a carcass. The knowing sniffed blood and it came how it came. In the slums of 19th century New York, a tattooed mystic fights for her life. Her survival hangs on the turn of a tarot card. And at the bottom of the description it says, The Knowing is a powerful novel of obsession and betrayal. It is inspired by real historical characters, including Maud Wagner, one of the first known female tattoo artists, New York gang The Dead Rabbits, and characters from P.T. Barnum's circus in the 1800s. So I just wanted something that was a little bit out of my 
comfort zone read, which is vampires most of the time and dragons. So this one really spoke to me. It's a beautiful book as well. And somehow, like, I really love the bone season by Samantha Shannon. And it is also with mystic and psychic abilities. So I might also really love this one. Who knows? The second to last book is another Elisa Kova book and this one is called A Duel with the Vampire Lord. It is a married to magic novel so I think it is in the same realm as A Deal with the Elf King or something like that. I did kind of meh-ish enjoy that book. It was a really easy and fast read so I'm hoping this one will be that too and I just and I just let myself get caught into the trap that is vampire themed books and especially when they are red. So yeah, I fell into this trap and I'll keep you updated if it's a good one or not. And then the final book is probably one of the books that I have been looking forward to the most. This is The Court of Shadows by Victor Dixon and it is the first book in the Vampiria, I think, trilogy it is. And this book I actually saw in French because Victor Dixon is a French author and I saw this book in French in one of the bookstores that I go to frequently. I was like, oh my god, this looks beautiful. What is this? Started looking it up and I was hesitating of starting to read it in French, but now I'm very happy that I didn't and that I'm actually picking up the books in English. They have in the meantime been translated to Dutch, so to my native language, but I don't ever read in Dutch. I would have preferred reading them in French or in English, but not in Dutch. And now recently I went on to bold.com, which is like a big website where you can find anything and everything. And I typed in Vampiria and selected English and I found the book like how. Um, I wish I would have gotten this sooner so I could immediately read it. Unfortunately, my vampire month is done. Um, so I'm keeping aside my vampire books until a later date. But I think during June, July, August, which is like the more holiday months, I will just not have a specific theme to my TBRs and I might actually pick this one up rather soon. So I am very much looking forward to it. Um, on the back, it has only reviews or like blurbs. Um, so let's check out the front. A vampire king lurking in the shadows. A court that revels in blood. A girl with nothing to lose. Louis XIV, I'm not sure how you say it in English, transformed from the Sun King into the King of Shadows when he embraced immortality and became the world's first vampire. For the last three centuries, he has been ruling the kingdom from the decadent court of shadows in Versailles, demanding the blood of his subjects to sate his noble's thirst and maintain their loyalty. In the heart of rural France, commoner Jean Fraudelac witnesses the king's soldiers murder her family and learns of her parents' role in a brewing rebellion involving the forbidden secrets of alchemy. To seek her revenge, Jeanne disguises herself as an aristocrat and enrolls in a prestigious school for aspiring courtiers. She soon finds herself at the doors of the Palace of Versailles. But Jeanne, of course, is no aristocrat. She dreams not of court, but blood, the blood of a king. So I think this will be amazing. <laughs> I have very high hopes for this. If I would do another five-star prediction, this would be it. <laughs> so while I was recording another video on the same day that I'm recording the book haul, my fairy lit April actually arrived during recording, hence why I still look this way. And the theme is The Occult and I actually know which book it is because it's a book that I almost bought in the bookstore. And now I'm really happy that I didn't because I went and uh, looked at a preview of the, the books that were coming. Ooh, this is so pretty. Look at it. It is Evocation by S.D. Gibson, which means I now have two extra S.D. Gibson books to read. It comes with a pretty card with a letter by the author. It has a gorgeous different design than um, the book in store has. Oh my god, this is beautiful. It has like very tarot-like feel to me. I hope it is a... It is correct that it's like also magic inspired, like uh, the knowing, that would be amazing. So let's quickly read the card that comes with it. So April 2024, Adult Box, The Occult. What do you do when the devil comes knocking? 
The spellbinding story explores love, fear and the occult all through the eyes of a psychic prodigy who is desperately trying to find a workaround on an ancestral deal that is threatening his life. Okay, this sounds totally up my alley and I'm really excited that it arrived to me today. So I know this was a rather long video. These were all of the books that I got during the month of April. Um, but yeah, I know that these were a lot of books. I hope that during the month of May, I should be getting a few uh, books from subscriptions and pre-orders in. So I will be showing you those, but I'm actually actively trying of not buying too many books, which is very difficult. And also in one of my future videos that will be airing this week or next week, Week, I am also talking about 2024 releases that I'm looking forward to and of course there's a few books in there that I really want so yeah my no buy this year is really not going as well as I wanted it to. If you know one of these books feel free to let me know in the comments down below and especially if it's a book that you recommend I push forward on my TBR list and I read fast. Um, for now, The Crimson Mod is high on my TBR, The Court of Shadows, and Somewhere in the Deep as well. So those three are my top three priority from this pile of books. But of course, I own so many books that it's becoming a little bit difficult um, to stay on track with my TBR pile. Nonetheless, thank you so much for watching. Give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it. Of course, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I would love to have you here for every single video that I create. So again, thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon with a new video. Bye.